So how do we start this? <laughs> <laughs> no, laughter is a good way. Um, welcome to the Cave Pearl Project. Uh, we're going to give a brief history and overview of the path that has led us to a wonderful new student build uh, that we're putting forward to you through this series of educational videos. The loggers themselves have been developing based on the research work and uh, the original builds really were sort of an exercise in origami so they were relatively complicated soldering uh, a whole lot of jumper wires and, and basically trying to fit everything into uh, the housings that we were developing so this is a, a sort of standard housing for the research work and it's robust to uh, probably about 30 meters of depth these have been deployed for a long time but the details of, of sort of the complicated soldering job here and the housing construction it's a bit of overkill for a classroom situation and in 2015 we produced a more simplified layout here and you've got some experience with this Trish you've been using this in the classrooms for a while so if you wanted to sort of yeah. just talk about this I've been through three cycles of classes with this model it's been working really well uh, some of the positive aspects is that it has enough room for even the novice uh, student to electronics to assemble so their their fingers can literally physically get onto all the components there's a beautiful range of different types of components that they need to gain experience from so heavy beefy metal heat sucking uh, power connectors to DuPont crimp connectors and so forth a little bit of everything is here um, some of the downsides though that have been coming forward after three cycles is that as far as the student build is concerned, there really isn't that much space left on the platform for them to add extra components. I do happen to have a drill press, press in the classroom, but maybe not everyone does, and so that could be a limiting factor. Um, some of the other uh, challenges include that there's actually not very much soldering involved in this at all, and so the students were actually coming out a little bit sad because they hadn't really had enough practice to master soldering by the time they were done. So there's pros and there's cons, and after three years uh, of using this in the classroom, have now moved on to the new student build. Ta-da! The, the idea here was we're, we're addressing some of those limitations, um, especially the space limitation. That, that little platform was, was a bit too small, and it didn't give the students room to do uh, some extra circuitry, and so to this build we've added a breadboard so that they can do a little bit of extra work in terms of signal processing like debouncing. There's also room to just sort of drop in your standard sensor board. This is sort of a fairly typical one and you can just connect it to the logger literally by pushing it in. Uh, this also addresses one of the challenges that the students had with uh, the newer build when we came up with the uh, the screw terminal design in 2017 uh, this extra component really added flexibility but in order to fit everything into uh, the deployment housings it had to be stacked up really tightly and um, this, is, this is one of your students built this didn't yeah you? this one's actually a recent uh, a recent build a uh, student working with me over the summer uh, partly to trial the development of the video series that you're now going to experience I uh, was provided with the videos and minimal instruction, and this is a fully functional first unit ever built by this student. Um, so we're, we know we're on the right path as far as time and ease of assembly, especially by novice users and, and, and electronics people. And that's really a big part of the ethos of this whole project. But uh, I think she mentioned that the toughest part was this soldering section up here. And uh, that, that's reflected by some feedback we've had from other people who've been building the loggers is that, you know, it's just there's too much in one place for a beginner to sort of get this completed assembly together. And so, again, with some uh, helpful advice from a friend of ours, Brian Davis, who's also building these things, we've just moved the RTC board off of the main stack that was described in the, the tutorials from 2017 and just laid it down flat inside this housing because we've got lots of room. Uh, it's, it really doesn't add that much uh, complication to the build, and in fact, 
gets rid of that nasty soldering point because now we can just put the RGC on with the screw terminals. The other advantage of moving to this box is that it addresses one of the other problems that was happening with uh, the students is that some of the students were never quite managing to get to assembling the final housing. And pedagogically, I really want my students to get to the point where they're acquiring a data stream, they're, they're getting a response curve, they're doing some form of calibration, they're actually measuring and monitoring mass and energy flux in the near Earth surface uh, using this data logging platform really as, a, as an analytical tool. It's a means of generating primary analytical data to test hypotheses. So by moving the time invested from assembling a PVC housing, um, towards just simply having a box assembly. I'm hoping that this round will, will address some of those issues for some of the students. So um, that's, that's it. Basically, hopefully we've done the three things that we were hoping to achieve with uh, the education version of the logger, which is made it simpler to build without losing those skills. Again, the soldering we felt was important, uh, the expandability is important, and in order to save time, we're sort of gone to uh, one of these pre-made housings and we're using a lot of components. Um, you know, we described how to build robust underwater connectors in the earlier video series. Now we're just going to use a sort of an off-the-shelf version. So the idea is that this is, is going to save time both for the instructor and for the students while giving them more flexibility. And there's also, we retained a good range of the hands-on skill with DuPont connectors, some primary contact with breadboards, epoxy, and so forth. Cable glands have been added, which is also a positive. So, without uh, further ado, let's, uh, let's get to building one of these things.